little different from Neil Expecto. No doubt greeting, and maybe it does so more. Yeah? Congressman Mahon, Lino. George. In presenting this bill today, I thought I'd better go over two or three points with you yeah. that, uh, yeah. First of all, we don't need this bill at all. We're not asking for it for a vote of confidence. We're not asking for it even in support of our efforts. Uh, we, uh, in view of the increased demand, have to have uh, ammunition. We, we, uh, we have to have extra ordnance. We have to have extra fuel. We have to have uh, uh, the extras provided in this bill, maintenance, because helicopters are flying 90,000 hours instead of 30. Yeah. Uh, we have funds, as you know better than anybody else, in 5, 10 we could transfer. Yeah. But to do that without telling the Congress in such a huge amount, I thought might make them feel that, well, uh, uh, he's just kind of ignoring us and so on and so forth. So I said to the leadership, I'll use it under my transfer authority, or I'll send a new message, whichever you think's better. And it was pretty generally agreed that the, you, if you were real honest and frank and candid, you'd say, here's what we need, and uh, I'm going to ask for this additional, and you give it to us, and I'll use my transfer if it's an emergency and you're not here sometime. But since you're sitting up there and you can hear it, it seems to me it'd be better for you to examine it and uh, make us justified and so forth. So that is the first reason. I think that's good. Now, the second thing for your background, and I, I think this is uh, extremely important. Uh, Mr. Betancourt is here, and uh, uh, he was said last evening that he has now, through his own private sources, uh, confirmed uh, what happened uh, uh, down there, and that this is not any uh, plaything and not an ordinary uh, uh, fight uh, of politicians that uh, it uh, it's, uh, uh, has a good deal of outside influences. He's satisfied. He's uh, yeah, and I'm hoping that uh, Betancourt will be interviewed today and be questioned pretty closely and see if he won't get on the record of that because I think that would be very important to us. Now, number three, Ms. Bosch is here, and we have developed that she didn't know, they didn't even know there's going to be a revolution, that this Colonel Camano and uh, the uh, Westerns, or two military dictatorships fighting each other in a big war, and uh, they just used Bosch. Uh, he didn't even know they were going to do it. Uh -huh. They brought his name in so he'd be a nice poet and a sweet uh, liberal and a good uh, human being and kind of put him up in the front. And uh, as soon as uh, they got going, they dropped him like a hot potato. Yeah. Now, the Latin liberals like Munoz Marine and Betancourt and the others are coming around to that. But... Uh, uh, this is uh, this is not just any peasant uprising against the government. This is a question of uh, uh, some folks trying to do a job and uh, uh, Camano, uh, the colonel, uh, using Bosch kind of as a front to have two military dictators fighting each other. I thought that that just having knowledge of that would be of uh, some value to you. Now, of course, we are pursuing it carefully. Yes. And uh, some have indicated that we might be, the administration might be hesitant or doubtful about its policy in some either oh. Vietnam or there. And that, that, that's not the thought at all. I've got a vote of confidence 502 to 2 on the August thing, which says uh, prevent any aggression anywhere and protect armed troops anywhere. Uh, I thought, though, this would be a master stroke with the Congress to show them I was frank and yeah. candid, and when I needed something, I'd put it right in their belly, and if they didn't want to give it to me, they'd say so, and if they did, they'd say so. Yeah. And if they gave it to me, why, uh, uh, they'd say we can trust the guy, although he's got authority, he didn't write his check, he let us let us in on it. Yeah. So I want, to, I want to be sure that you get that, uh, that picture. Well, I've been a little worried as to just how the best to approach this. Now, handing it before the full committee is no problem at all, yeah. uh, but you have to be careful what you say and uh, not to get the right slant this will show uh, the approval of, of the of, of the policy uh, w w which we're pursuing in Southeast Asia of course this is one of the objectives yes. as requested you see in your in your message of yesterday but uh, uh, it, it, uh, and it's true also that uh, this could be handled within the framework of existing appropriations and language but with Congress in session why shouldn't we uh, be kept advised and participate in these matters? Because we're supposed to control the purse strength. If I hadn't been there 30 years on the Hill, I would have just uh, signed the document that came to me, transferring funds under 510. Yes. When it came to me, I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. 
Now, why in the hell don't I tell George Mahon and Carl Hayden? Why don't I tell Mendel Rivers and, and uh, John Stennis? If I don't tell them, three days later, they'll be finding out about it, and they say, good God, this man is doing his own appropriating down here, and we're right here in session. Yeah, this is a good, this is a good uh, this So I laid my cards on the table. If they want those helicopters to fly, if they want that fuel in them, if they want ammunition in their gun, uh, they can uh, pass that bail. If they don't, they can cut it or reduce it or defeat it, and I'll have to be guided by what they do. Yeah, but of course the House, uh, well, the committee was just overly unanimous and cooperative, and I think the House, there'll be a little squawking from fellows like Gross, but uh, in my opinion, very short. And I've asked McCormick and Albert uh, to, uh, to say a word. We're going to do it 30 minutes to the side and try to do it in an hour. Uh, I think that's a, that's a good deal, you know. That's hey, excellent. You know something that bothers me. With all these terroristic uh, uh, techniques that are developed in the world, I'm afraid that the time is coming, just like this thing in Santa Domingo, they, they, they are refining uh, the, the instruments of terror. They could even uh, blow up the Capitol someday, some well, of the people. Well, you know? this, this thing is real serious. It, it, no question about it. And we've got to meet it, meet it head on. And we, uh, what we've done, as I said to a group of ambassadors this morning, uh, this thing occurred Saturday. We asked for a ceasefire. We met, uh, talked to them Monday, met with them Tuesday officially. We said, please ceasefire, please understand this thing's grave. We met with them Wednesday and they debated Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday at three o'clock, our ambassador says, I'm still not going to ask for help because I hope there's some other way. But their government, their chief of police, their military authorities, their, their governmental leaders, and in, in charge says, you're on your own, we cannot give you any protection, and they're shooting through the embassy. Now, what does a man do under those circumstances? I did two things. I, I complied with the re unanimous request of the country team and the unanimous recommendation of uh, the departments here, and I sent them troops, announced to the American people what I was doing immediately, just as soon as I get it out of the typewriter. They said it's very rushed. The that works are mad because they didn't give them a day or two's notice on it. And uh, uh, immediately notified American states and said, please get in here and let's uh, decide it. Since then, I've asked them, please get us a ceasefire that'll work. Please get us some troops that'll work. Please get us a commission that'll tell us what to do. We don't want to do any of those things. But we're not going to be like uh, mothers up there with all of our children being lined up and shot. And at 5 o'clock, we were told they were marching 100 policemen down the street to put them against the wall to shoot them. They're doing that to their people. What would they be doing during the hour? That's right. Now, now, as it is, they'll say, well, you ought to have done so-and-so. As I look back, you ought to call a meeting of the United Nations or the OAS and had them debate for a while longer. If I had done that and 100 had been killed, they'd said, why didn't the idiot take uh, precautions and then call the meeting? Right. So either way you go, you got it. And uh, uh, But the point is this. We haven't killed anybody. And they haven't killed a single civilian up to now. And we have saved, they had 1,500 to 2,000 Dominicans in the streets, smelling dead, yeah. but they're not an American because we surrounded them, we put our people around them, we put cut off the zone, and we have not lost an American life as of yet. Now, the snipers picked off six of our Marines from top of building, but we weren't uh, killing Dominicans. Uh, we were there protecting Americans and 36 other countries. And we haven't lost a life, which is the most phenomenal thing that you ever heard of. And um, I told McNamara, if the order's issued, I said, now let's don't get some wild bully or some captain that'll start shooting up the street when they invade on him. Let's get the best man we got in the United States Army, send him, put him in charge, and tell him to use a cool head. And his job is not to kill anybody, but to keep any of our people from being killed. Now that's it. And he sent Palmer in 22 minutes from the time I gave the order. Palmer was in an airplane from Andrews, and he has taken charge. And it has, uh, I, they may kill a thousand this afternoon, but up to now, we haven't lost one, and we're bringing them out by the hundreds. We brought out three or four hundred yesterday, we're bringing three or four hundred out now. We've got five thousand to bring out. And the Latin, they tell me the Latin ambassadors themselves are the ones that are the most grateful because they're just getting hell shot out of their embassy. Yeah, yeah. Now, in this thing today, uh, the chief emphasis should be on Southeast Asia, I assume. Well, I, I, yeah, I certainly would, yes. I'd say on both of them. I'd say that we're, we're trying to, uh, to we're, we're using the maximum effort to prevent aggression with the minimum expenditure and the minimum loss of life. Yes. Now, uh, in the last, uh, since I became president, 
November 23rd, we killed 26,000 Viet Cong. Yeah. But they've infiltrated enough where we estimate they've got 40,000 now. But most of our, practically everyone we killed is in South Vietnam, where they've invaded, they've aggressed, they've come across this line. And we're, we are having to uh, use a good deal more helicopters, a good deal more planes, we've, uh, a good deal more fuel, a good deal more maintenance. And unless we want to pull out, why, uh, we've got to have the funds to do it with, and uh, we can use them and uh, come back and call you in special session in November or December, or we can get them now while you're here. Or we can, uh, if you don't want us to do it, we can just quit, quit flying them. Yes, yes. Well, I think we'll have a good day, uh, and uh, I think uh, we'll... Uh, Thing. We'll see whether they believe. Uh, we'll 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 uh, we'll see whether they believe in the executive being frank and candid and open with them. I called every Republican on the committee. I didn't make it a Democratic uh, pair, and I laid it on the line as clear as I knew how. And I just wanted you before you went on the floor to know it. This is good. Thanks. Appreciate it.